Hey, welcome to Classic Car Garage, the original Classic Car Restoration how-to television show. Thanks for joining us again this week. I'm Jeff Shade. As you know, uh, we've been working on our 56 Chevy sedan delivery, and we're up to the point now where we're going to be prepping out the sheet metal on our Project 56. We're also going to be spraying some primer today and then showing you how to block sand. Jim Richardson's going to stop by with his Eastwood restoration tip. Today, Jim's going to show us how to repair and buff out stainless trim. And we also have our new product segment at the end of the show, too. Well, I see Tom's over there right now getting set to work on the sheet metal on our Project Chevy. So what do you say we go over and join him? Hey Tom, how you doing? Great Jeff, good to see you. Good to see you again. Well, if it sounds like a little bit of an echo in here, it's because we're in Tom's downdraft paint booth here at Tom's Custom Auto Body. And Tom, the reason we're in here with our fender is because you really don't want to use the sort of products that we're going to be using in a regular garage, right? That's right. These are um, very toxic chemicals, so we want to be in a nice, safe environment. So we're here in the downdraft paint booth because, of course, downdraft, meaning that the draft comes down and out the sides like this, it's going to carry any contaminants, things right into those filters. We would suggest, of course, that if you're doing this sort of work that you rent a paint booth, you can usually find those in your neighborhood. They'll run you about $100 to $150 a day to rent a nice paint booth. Now, we've got our fender up here. As we said, you've welded up a few holes here, I see. We did a little bit of body work. We had to do a little metal shaping in the front. It looks like the car's been tapped up there a little bit. And we had to remove a lot of residue that we had left on here from the, the chemical stripper. We used a, a dual action sander like this one, and uh, we used an 80 grit sandpaper first. 80 grit to begin with, that's, that's going right. to be nice and coarse. Then you go to what, 150? 150, yep. So mm -hmm. once you've gone over this with a 150 grit, then it pretty much looks like this. That's right. But because we've touched it with our fingers and so forth, now when I do this, this is, doesn't look like much, but it's going to leave oils in here, right? That's right, there's oils that come off your body, so we need to clean all that off of here. Um, we're going to move into the Spiesecker system, and the first product that we're going to use is this Permahide product. It's a silicone remover, 7090, and you simply, we put it in a spray bottle because mm -hmm. it makes it a little bit easier right. to uh, apply. You apply that sparingly. I mean, you can put on a whole bunch of that. So this is really a pre-cleaner that you want to use and go over this with a Scotch-Brite pad That's right. in order to get all the oils and so forth off here and really clean this metal up, right? That's right, and this, this really does clean the metal nicely so when we get into the next uh, priming phase we've got a nice clean surface with uh, no contaminants no chance of delamination or any other problems that we might have so that's very important step number one is to make sure that you start with a nice clean surface that's like right. this sure okay is. now we couldn't spray any sort of primer on this at all because of course nothing would stick yet that's because right. we haven't etched this metal that's right and you can see how much dirt we're taking yeah, off of here. Take a look at that. This, uh, this is a real important step here. The next step we're going to move into is an acid etching primer. And it's another Spies Hacker product. Um, this is uh, 3688, and it's catalyzed by a, uh, an activator, uh, 3689. You mix this on a one-to-one -one basis. 50-50, and this metal etch, once you put it on here, is going to sort of, uh, sort of turn it a little bit of a yellow-green color. And That's the purpose right. of etching the metal is what? It's to give us a bond between the metal and the next product that's going to be applied over the top of this, which is a, a high-build acrylic primer. Okay, so if we were to spray the primer right on this, of course it wouldn't stick. And we're going to etch this metal, though, first with this. Well, Tom Clemente, or Shorty there, is in what looks to be sort of like a space suit. What is that exactly? You know, safety is really important when we get inside the spray booth here. What he has on is a uh, fresh air system made by DeVilba, which actually takes compressed air, uh -huh. runs it through that cartridge system, and he can breathe that air. So he has his own air system right there plugged into the wall, basically. That's right. Now he's using pretty good method right there. We want to keep in mind that every time we use a spray gun like this, that you want to really use even strokes like that, That's keeping right. the gun, what, about 12 to 18 inches away? Yep, just like Short is doing it right there. That's a nice pattern he's got going on the fender there. Okay, Tom, so about 15 minutes has passed. Yes. And now he's spraying on the uh, primer sealer, right? That's right. This is called the 5150, which is an acrylic primer. And uh, this is a high build product. And uh, as you watch him spray here, he's going to put down a tack coat. And then we're going to put down one heavy coat after that. Okay, so he's very evenly spraying this on. And he's going to go across this completely one time. That's the tack. Yep. And then how long before he goes back and wax it? Instantly. Instantly. We're going to do a tack and a whack. There's uh, no dry time in between this. We're going to use an infrared heater on here. Uh, bake it for approximately a half an hour. And then we'll uh, block this down using our straight line sander. 
and do our plastic work over the top of this so we've got a really nice bond onto that bare metal. Now, we're going to bake this for an hour with the Infratech heater at 100 degrees or so, but if you didn't have an Infratech heater, you would want this to cure for how long? About a 24-hour period. Okay, so it would be until tomorrow before we were able to go into the next step. That's right. Now, the next step on this is going to be spraying a guide coat and yep. block sanding, right? That's we'll right. do that before doing any of the body work on, that, the, on the panel. That's right. After we get done blocking, we'll be able to see the high and low spots and then address those with a little plastic filler. Great. So when we come back here at Classic Car Garage, we're going to give you a little lesson in block sanding. Don't go away. Well, Tom, looks like we've got just about everything we need here to get started with this fender. We've got our Rage Gold, and of course, we've got our masks here. We right. want this so we don't inhale any of this uh, primer dust, actually. Yes. Now, the first thing we're going to do is spray on a guide coat here. Any kind of like black aerosol paint will work for us, right? That's right. And you don't have to spray on too much, just no, a little bit. No, you really don't want here. a lot on there, just a little bit. Just a little bit of a mist, and again, we're going to put this on there. And well, first of all, let me spray some on there for you, and tell me if I've got about the right amount here, huh? Is that enough? That's perfect. Okay. So we'll just work in this area right here, a little okay. too much over there. Now what this does is it puts a little bit of a, uh, a black place here so that when we block sand over this, and I had my, my block back here, That's if we right. used a hand sander, mm -hmm. we use one of these, but when we block sand on this, wherever there's a low spot, of course, this paint is not going to come off, and that's going to show us where we want to do the body work. And of course, if we grind down through the primer and into the metal, that means there's a high spot there. We've that's got right. some body work to uh, do. But now, this is a, a long block, right? That's right. That's a long board. And, uh, but we're going to be using uh, a pneumatic sander this that's time, right? That's right. Dynabraid has a really nice sander. We're going to use 150 grit. That long board had 80 grit on it. So 150 we, grit to start with. That's right. And we're going to take that all the way to 320. Okay. This is, a, this is our primary primer on here. So we want to take this up to a, a 320 grit. And then we're going to use a sealer over the top of that, which will take it to uh, preparation for paint, which would be around 500. Okay. So 150 grit first, right? That's right. Okay. I'm going to put my mask on here and we'll get started. All right, Tom, so what does this tell us about this particular fender? We well, can see a little bit right there. That's right, that's where I welded. Right. And we had to weld a little hole up right there. And we've got just a little bit of a low spot right there. Not, not real bad, but you can see how strong this primer is. This exactly. is good primer. Right. This is, uh, we only put two coats on here, and look at the filling uh, capabilities we got out of that. That is pretty clean. Now, if the whole rest of the fender turns out this way, we really don't have that much work to do, right? No, we don't really have a lot of work at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little scotch bright and we're going to get inside there, and we want to remove any of that guide coat because we don't want to put any plastic over the top of that. When we come back here on Classic Car Garage, we're going to give you a little tip in doing the rest of the body work. Stay with us. Welcome back to Classic Car Garage. Well, as you can see, we've sanded the guide coat off here with 150 grit sandpaper. And the only place, Tom, that I can see we need to do some body work is right here at the top. And this is where that little hole was that you welded up. I understand that uh, this comes from a big mirror. Of course, this car started life as an ambulance, so it had to have the big mirrors on the side there. But this looks like the only place that we're going to need to do some body work. That's right. So the first thing we want to do with this panel, though, after we have 150 gritted this down, is to what? Clean it up again, right? Now we're going to clean it up again using our... Um uh, Spies Hecker uh, pre -cleano. Right. Now so we, we get need, it nice and clean inside we, there. We don't need to use the scotch Bright pad at this no. point either, do we? No, because it's, it's basically clean. We just want to make sure there's no dust inside there. Any place that we may have touched it or there's dust in That's there. That's right. So now that we've got it all cleaned up, the next step is to mix up our Rage Gold product, That's right? right. This Evercoat is, uh, Rage Gold. Evercoat's product. It's a plastic filler. Works really good. Now, this requires a catalyst, some sort of hardener? Yeah, we're not going to need much plastic. Um, yeah, mixing that's... ratio on this is golf ball size of plastic to about a one inch strip. So this is about a golf ball. We want to put down about a one inch. A one inch of strip of the uh, hardener there. That's pretty close to one inch. Close enough. That's now there's right. a technique to mixing this up, isn't that's there? That's right. We, we don't want to induce any air into this. so. You mix this in a circle eight, and you want to keep your spreader on the surface as much as possible. And you can kind of see that eight 
pattern that I'm right. You've got sort of that. a ninety degree angle to the surface. That's here. right. Yep. And you can see how it's mixing. It's mixing up really nice. It's going to turn it into sort of a chartreuse looking. That's right. <laughs> filler here. And the more times you pick this spreader up, the more air you're going to get right, in there. Right, you can see the little bubbles there. Yeah, and, and that's bad. You don't want that. Ultimately, don't, we don't want any bubbles at that's all. That's right. We don't want any, any air bubbles in this. We want a nice, tight, nice, tight surface there. Evercoat Rage Gold. This is something that most uh, hobbyists can find this at, at uh, basically an auto parts supply store. Paint or a, store. A paint store, that yep. sort of thing. Automotive paint store. And there are all sorts of different grades of body filler out there, right? There sure are. And uh, you found in your experience this to be one of the best. This is one of the best plastic fillers out there. Now, once again, we've worked the metal on this car to the point where you don't need a lot of plastic filler. This is just going to be a little skim coat. Yeah, here, we're right? not. I mixed up a lot, but uh, we want to. You can see right where the low spot is. It's right. not very bad. It's really filled it in yeah. right there. That's all we've got to do. So now we're going to, I put on a little tin coat. That's called a tin coat. That's right. And you're preserving, trying to preserve this, uh, this yeah, body then, edge there too, it looks right. like a little bit. But of course, you'll finish that out. Yeah. Okay. So you can see I didn't have to put on much. No, this not at all. That's just bad. a very small skim coat. Now, how long does it take for this uh, Rage Gold to harden up? This will be drying about 10, 15 minutes. So 10 or 15 minutes, then we can go to basically forming this to the, to the, to the panel of the body, That's right? right? We'll do basically the same thing as we did with the other air sander. Mm -hmm. When we were blocking it, is I'm gonna hit this with some 150, and we'll do the same exact thing, like how we block this panel out, and then preparing this uh, to move on to uh, 320 grit. Okay, good, so through the magic of television, we're going to wait, and we'll come back in 15 minutes. So this looks pretty good now. This yep. looks great as You can see the accent line is still there. It's still there. We, we didn't disturb any of that. It's still, you can see it carries through and it looks real nice right there. Well Tom, I tell you, I can't wait to see the whole rest of the fender looking like this and especially when it's sealed up again. Again, it's going to look just like an egg. And it shouldn't be too much longer now. It won't be. When we come back here on Classic Car Garage, we've got the new product segment, so stay with us. It does look nice. In this week's viewer's garage is the 66 Ford Fairlane GT Convertible, owned by Gary Hufford of Wilmington, Ohio. Gary, good luck and thanks for the picture. Now, if you've got a classic you want us to see, send your pictures to us here at Classic Car Garage. Hey, welcome back to Classic Car Garage. Before we leave you today, we got a couple of new products to show you. Take a look at this. This is from Standard Abrasives, and this is the carburetor cleaning kit. Now, this comes with everything you need to clean and polish the venturis of your carburetor. Also, it has different sort of abrasive discs here for getting those uh, casting flashings off your carburetor. Basically, this is everything you need in here, including the mandrels and the sandpaper, to do about four to five carburetors. It'll give you superior performance and make your carburetor look like a jewel. Now, a lot of people have asked us, how does Tom get that show-winning shine on his cars here in the shop? Well, right here is his secret. You've got everything you need in one kit. This is the stuff that Tom uses now. This is from ABC Products Promotion in Anaheim, California, the only company that offers this. These are all the professional-grade 3M products here. What you've got is your gloss enhancers, your cleaners and restorers for the vinyl, your chrome and metal polish, you've got your wax, you've got your detailing cloth, you've got your sponges, your water sprite. Most importantly though, what you have with this kit is the directions on how to use it. Again, these are professional grade products. These are what the pros use and this is what Tom has won his paint awards with. It also removes the orange peel and those little swirl marks that you get in your car. This is fantastic stuff. Retails for $180 for everything you see right here, but a special for Classic Car Garage viewers, they're going to let this go for $135, the complete kit. You can get it by logging on to the web address you see on your screen or calling that telephone number. Well, that's just about all the time we've got for you on today's Classic Car Garage. We hope you've learned a little something about prepping uh, sheet metal and uh, spraying primer and block sanding. Till next week, for Tom and Jim, I'm Jeff Shin. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again right here on Classic Car Garage.